everybody, I'm back with another commentary video. Today we're going to do Roy G. Guerrero Park here in Austin, Texas. And I think this is definitely one of the top four courses in the Austin area. Um, if you were going to ask me for my personal ranking, I think I would go Roy G. in Met Center, Circle C, and I would include Old Settlers up in that list. Uh, but Roy G. is really a challenging course, and it's targeted to challenge players at the open skill level. So players in the lower divisions can play here, but they're probably going to be taking par and above on some of the more challenging holes. Um, I've actually reached out to Chris Harris, who is kind of a local legend in the Austin area, a thousand rated player. So definitely above my skill level you know, to kind of get his insight in the best way to play these holes um, when you're really attacking for birdie. This is definitely a popular destination course for out-of-towners. So, yeah, we're just going to jump right into it and talk about things as we go. All right, real fast, the first thing I wanted to say about hole one is that the traditional parking lot for this course is mostly inaccessible because there's a bridge that's been out for a few years there. So most people are parking in the opposite side of the park in the parking lot over by hole two. Um, Anyway, so the hole itself, the first shot is definitely a distance driver off the tee, maybe a destroyer or something. For right-handed, backhanded players, you want to get as much distance as you can and then carry as far left as you can so that your approach can hopefully be something more straightforward, maybe with a mid-range. Uh, if you can't throw that far, you may be able to do your second shot with something more like a T-bird, uh, but this is actually a pretty gettable par four to start the course with. So if you watch my commentary videos before, you know I always try to talk about the hole in terms of how to get birdie. Um, hole two is one that is probably going to be gettable for most people in the upper amateur levels and definitely in the open level. Uh, it's really just a regular hyzer from a right-handed player, um, either down the middle or even hugging the left side, that's going to finish over to the left about 330 feet. Um, it's a little more challenging for left-handed players. Um, you're probably going to need to highs or flip something and have that turn over late um, or, you know, a power forehand. Uh, but it is gettable and it's probably one of the easier birdies to get. Now hole three, at least from the longs, is probably going to be a challenge for most anyone other than open players just because of pure distance. It's 430 feet and you're going to have to either flex something down there or hyzer flip something and get it to hold a long straight line. Um, for most people in the amateur divisions, that's going to be a tall task with the low ceiling and the relatively tight fairway. Uh, but it is reachable if you've got the distance. Uh, from the shorter tee, it's a much more straightforward shot for everyone. Also for forehand and left-handed players, as you get closer to the basket, it's guarded a little bit more on the left side of the fairway. All right, so hole four is going to have some guardian trees right off the tee on the right side. So you're going to want to get left of those, but then the main fairway is going to be a tunnel of trees that's going to carry off to the right. So I talked to Chris and he said that the way that he plays this hole is to hyzer flip something like a leopard three or a T-bird and get it high to carry that angle for the turnover all the way. Um, as a left-handed player, and I think this would work also for forehand players, um, just a traditional hyzer flip that finishes with hyzer is probably the way to go. I have also executed this with a straight mid-range and just kind of carried it all the way there. All right, I can't even imagine birdieing hole five, but I talked to Chris to see how he plays it, and he said that the way to do it is to hyzer flip a max distance high speed driver hugging the left side of the fairway and you're really trying to get to the center or left center of the fairway after that shot um, and then if you're in the correct landing zone you should be able to get a hyzer flip up to the basket um, or maybe a roller approach and depending on where you land he said that there's also a flex line that you may be able to hit um, but you also have to be careful because if you overshoot the basket, 
there's a drop off behind the basket and that can make comeback putts really challenging. So this is a really difficult hole. It's a really great hole, but it's also, I think, a bonus birdie for anybody, even at the open skill level. Uh, hole six is a little bit of a relief, I think. Technically, there are three lines, but really there are only two. Uh, but they're both hyzers. So you can either go hyzer around the right side or you can hyzer around the left side. Um, Chris says he plays this with an overstable mid range. As a lefty, I just throw a standard lefty hyzer around the left side and just dodge that first tree off the tee. So I think this is a very gettable birdie that most people should be able to pick up. I think hole seven is one of the signature holes here on the course. It plays right up next to a ball golf course on the left side. Um, and you'll see my drone flying down the right side of this fairway because there's a split all the way down. But Chris said he likes to play the left fairway and throw a huge flex shot 400, 450 feet down the fairway. He said you really want to try to stay off the left side um, because it's a little bit more open to approach over here on this side. Um, as a lefty, I'm just going to go left channel, left channel all the way. And um, I think I throw a PD for the first shot and then something like a T-bird for the second shot. I think the important thing is as you get towards the end of this hole, there's going to be a lot of guardian trees on the right side and the fairway is going to narrow. So you just have to be smart about your decisions approaching the basket. I'm not sure about Chris, but I would consider this one a bonus birdie. Hole 8 is another one that's going to be relatively straightforward for most players. I think you're just going to want a fairway driver that's going to finish off to the left, which is just a stable fairway for most people. Um, there's a little bit of room for left-handed players to throw a turnover. Otherwise, a power forehand is going to need to be the play for a left-handed player. So Chris actually called out hole nine as a really good separator hole for pros. And he said that the way that he plays it is to throw a hyzer flip with late finish to the right with a fairway driver. Um, and then actually the way that I play this is also a hyzer flip, but with finish, you know, a hyzer finish to the right, uh, which would also work as a forehand play for right hand players. Hole 10 is kind of interesting. There's a narrow gap that you have to hit right up here off the tee and with kind of a low ceiling. Uh, and you're going to need a little bit more carry than you are going to want to deal with. Uh, Chris says that he hides or flips a mid range, which is actually the same thing that I do on this hole, um, unless it's too windy, in which case he'll hide or flip a fairway. Um, maybe he's crazy, but my brother will just throw a putter right down the middle on this one. All right, hole 11 is another classic Roy G hole, and the drive is relatively straightforward. You see that tree right in the middle? Your drive can go to either the left or the right side of that tree, but you're gonna to wanna to be cutting off a lot of distance on that drive. And then ideally, you'd be set up for a fairway approach, but again, the fairway is gonna narrow as it approaches the basket, so you're gonna to wanna to need to be really smart about the approach and try to just get something very straight up uh, for your approach. All right, hole 12 is pretty interesting. Um, it's almost an L or J shaped hole and you really want to be staying in the fairway all the way uh, you can get into a lot of trouble if you end up in the trees on the left side so for the most part this is going to be a wide rim driver where you catch some skip and turn on the end or maybe just a very overstable driver something like a firebird or an fd3 
uh, where you to make the air shot all the way. Uh, for left-handed, I don't know that there's an option here for birdie other than forehand. I don't think that the turnover is possible. All right, so hole 13. Like a lot of holes here at Roy G, your goal here is really just to be straight. So maybe a hyzer flip mid-range or fairway, something that you can keep straight for a little more than 300 feet. And if you can carry all the way down to the basket, you should be looking at birdie. So this one is definitely reachable for left-handed and right-handed players. Just got to keep it straight. That's the theme at Roy G. All right, so hole 14, I'm going to 100% defer to Chris because I can't do it on this hole. Uh, but he said basically he's going to throw a high-speed hyzer flip. Um starting on the left side of the fairway to maximize the amount of distance that he can get on the shot. And ideally, if you end up with the just a smash um, and you end up in the right landing zone, he said you should have a few different options for the approach. Um, hopefully a fairway driver, uh, either backhand or a forehand or even a roller uh, because there's a lot of trees in the latter part of the fairway. But he said the main worry with the roller is that you can roll long uh, because, you know, the grass here is pretty short, so we can just keep going. But yeah, this is a super challenging hole, and uh, you'll be really lucky to take better than par. All right, so hole 15 is actually harder than hole 14. And according to Chris, it's actually the hole that takes the highest numbers of any hole on this entire course. So it's crazy and there's two completely different ways to play it. So he said play number one is what he does and that's to take a max distance driver and end up on the walking path over there on the left side just as far up as you can push it. And then from there he said you may have a straight laser beam kind of mid-range or fairway shot, maybe a flex forehand or maybe a roller but all of those approaches are going to have you fighting through a whole pinball machine of trees. Now, the other way to play it is to go the way that the drone goes, which is to aim for the right side of the fairway with an absolute mash of a distance driver. And then there is kind of a path uh, to take it down the right side of the fairway. But unfortunately, being on the right side takes you further away from the basket. And so then you're going to need another pretty much full send to get to the basket in a pretty narrow tunnel shot. So getting a birdie on this one is really, really hard, but it is technically possible. Um, so yeah, good luck on hole 15. All right, hole 16, at least if you're right-handed, is relatively straightforward. Uh, it's just gonna be a big hyzer, a little bit uphill, um, and then it's gonna come back down so if you can just put kind of a power hyzer out there, it'll fade right towards the basket. Uh, Left-handed is definitely going to be more challenging. You may be able to pull off a turnover, but there's a little bit of a ceiling to work with. Or, you know, if you have a really powerful forehand, it might be an option. All right, so hole 17 is pretty awesome. And there's kind of a right side and a left side that you can choose to play. The normal right-handed play is going to be kind of a flexi power hyzer where you're going to hug the right side of the tree line before you finish back at the basket. Or um, there's a forehand hyzer flip play that goes down the left side. And then Chris said sometimes he likes to practice a backhand hyzer flip and hyzer that will go down the left side of the fairway. Um, left-handed, I'm just pretty much going to try to do the same thing as the right-handed play, which is kind of a power uh, hyzer line, maybe a hyzer flip. Um, and then you just have to have the power to get down there to the basket. But I've gotten this hole even at my level, even though I probably have above average distance for my skill level. All right, so as cramped as Roy G generally is, I think that hole 18 is a pretty fun hole because the fairway really widens up here. So the first shot, you're really just trying to get out of the gap uh, to get out to where it opens up a little bit. And from a right-handed player, you're just going to be throwing as hard as you can to get as much distance as you can, I think. 
Um, and even me left-handed, I'm basically throwing a little bit of an Anheuser or a turnover here. And once you get kind of out here, you want to be probably center left, uh, no matter who you are. Uh, if you're left-handed like me, there's a pretty wide open gap for a second shot um, up to the basket. But if you are right-handed, Chris says if he gets enough distance on the first shot and far enough left, then he can just take a straight mid-range or fairway to the basket. Um, or, you know, depending on where he is, he might take a forehand approach up to the basket. The right side of the basket where the drone is flying, it is possible to navigate over there. You're just going to have more things in the way. It's a little more well guarded, so you have to try your luck a little bit more. But it is possible. You'll probably have more luck using the left side of the fairway, though. All right, that was Roy G. Guerrero Park. Uh, this has been a much requested video from the community. And so big shout out to Chris Harris for his help. Uh, definitely getting kind of like the open pro perspective on how to play this course. And of course the right-handed perspective since I'm gonna be coming at it from a different angle. Uh, but yeah, this is really one of the best courses if not the best course in Austin. So I hope everybody enjoys it. Um, out of towners, hope you really like it when you come and play it. And thanks, uh, if you wanna see more of these videos, go ahead and subscribe.